Ahoy my friends, Ryder here and welcome back to another Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis video. Today I am jumping into the new event and I'm going to be taking on the Fury of Lightning and Wind to get that stage level 130. So one thing I do want to say guys is that this is going to, uh, this is going to call for some pretty powerful physical weapons. If you have at least two uh ob6 physical damaging weapons that are not wind since they're they're resistant to wind then you guys can do this for sure if not it's going to be tough even with my team right here and i have a power of 308,000, i'm still kind of struggling uh to get to the end although i'm still going to be able to do it and there is kind of like a little hack in this fight and that is essentially like the strategy that we're going for here is we're going to start off targeting the left Vajradara Wu. We're going to kill him during the sigil break. And then because the right one is left alive, instead of doing an AOE attack, he's going to do a single target attack. So one of our party members is going to die in the fight, right? Now, uh, if, if, you, if you're struggling with in the fight with the boss killing one of your DPSs and then you're struggling to get the rest of the damage in, you can just keep retrying the fight until the boss kills your healer at that point. And then it should be more or less pretty easy to take down the boss. So that's just one little hack. We're not gonna do that today. We're just gonna take it down with no matter uh, whoever the boss kills. But more or less, let's look at the battle effects. As you guys can see, stage level 130, total bonus 550%. Um, we are going to be bringing in a team of Zach, Matt, and Tifa. Essentially, this team is focused around bringing in as much physical attack damage as possible, a lot of physical attack boosts and buffs to the team, uh, along with having a physical defense buffer and AOE healer. So to go into Zach, I'm bringing the buff debuff extension costume. I do have him on slash combo right here. Um, we also have the ceremonial sword Z at OB6 and the black whiskers in the sub slot just for some extra physical attack. Uh, on Zach, I just have three uh, physical attack materials just stacked here just for physical attack on him right now. Now moving over to Mac, I do have his uh, gear voucher healing costume. I do have Vanishing X up just in case I charge it in time to use it on one of the Vajradaras since they get a massive physical attack boost. I'm going to be running Centipede in the main hand and then just a level 60 base 5 star Bramble Spine right here for the physical attack buff um, later on in the fight. So if Zack gets killed, Matt will be buffing Tifa's physical attack. If Tifa gets killed, Matt won't have to buff Zack's physical attack since the Ceremonial Sword does it for him. Um, and then if Matt dies, we'll just have two strong DPSs to take down the boss either way. For Matt's material right here, I am running a single Healing Asuna Fog, which I will use uh, going into the second or right after the first big attack. We have a Bio right here, which is just a stat stick for healing. And then also a Kira Materia right here as well. And last but not least, we have Tifa. Run your best physical costume if Tifa, Tifa is who you're using. So I'm running Amaranth's Claws since I don't have the Cowgirl costume. Guide Gloves at OB6 and the Amaranth's Claws here at OB10. Then I'm also running her the Water Kick. So I'm not running them the fast charging attacks. I'm running them uh, more powerful ones for later on in the fight uh, since I'm going to need that damage later on on the second one. And then for her, I'm also just running three powerful physical attack stat stick materials like Zach here as well. Now, if we go into their actual builds right here, Zach is going to be looking at 108,000 power, 8.1k HP, 4.5k physical attack. He's got 132 physical defense and 105 magic defense. His R abilities are going to be focusing basically pure DPS. So we have physical attack level seven. We have boost physical ability potency three, limit break potency two, buff debuff extension two, 
And we're going to have the level 3 physical attack dual allies and the level 2 right there, along with some HP. His sub weapons are going to be Cloud Stream Saber. We're also going to have the Glare Read right here, physical attack, boost limit break potency. And last but not least, the Hellhouse Caller. We're going to have one of these on each character to boost HP and physical defense just to help us out in the boss fight. So moving over to Matt. He's sitting at 83k power, 8.8k HP, 2.2k physical attack, 181 physical defense, and 2.5k healing. He's going to be more defensive focused, so HP at 4, physical defense 4. He's got healing at 9, buff debuff extension at 3, and a little bit of physical attack to all allies. His sub weapons are going to include the feather scatter, HP, physical defense. We have the guard stick right here for eight or healing and limit break potency. And then we have the Hellhouse Cannon for some more HP and physical defense right there. All right. Now, last but not least, we have Tifa Lockhart, 116,000 power, 9.1k HP, 4.6k physical attack. She's got 113 physical defense. Her R abilities are going to be focusing HP level 4, physical attack 7. We have physical ability potency level 7, which is great. And then also the physical attack to all allies right here as well. Her sub weapons are going to include Glenn's Axe at OB1, the Murasame OB10, and the Maritime Sword OB10. All right, guys, that is going to conclude my build. Let's get into the stage level 130. All right, guys, here we are coming into the stage level 130 boss fight. So at the beginning of this fight, I'm going to target the left Vajradara. Immediately jump over to Tifa. No mercy, jump over to Cloud, Ceremonial Strike right here. Then I'm just going to sit here on uh, Matt right until this point right here. Get off the recovery circle. That's going to boost our physical defense, and we're going to go into the first cross strike right here. All right, so I took physical attack up on everyone and got the physical defense up. After that, we're just going to roll straight into DPS here, guys. As soon as they take that massive physical defense down, um, we're just going to go straight for them. I'm going to heal the fog on Matt, and they're going to start their sigil break here in a second. All right, so there it is. We're going to try and do as much damage right here as possible. I just missed getting over to Matt um, for him to not start casting fogs. That's the problem in this fight, is if you bring it, he just starts casting it everywhere you go. All right, so here we are. I'm going to recovery circle on Matt. All right, and honestly, when this boss does his attack, we're not even going to block it. He is going to kill someone. It doesn't really make a difference. I'm just hoping to get off one more hit here with Tifa, and I'm not going to get it. All right, so hopefully he targets Matt. Honestly, I don't like the RNG aspect. He did target Matt. All right, so this is ideal right here. Um, so we're just going to roll straight into the damage. I'm going to wait for him to get off balance right there. And we're just going to do as much damage as we can right here, guys. We're just going to lay into this dude and try to kill him as fast as possible. We are about to get our limit breaks right here as well. He's going to hit us with one hit. Zack and Tifa are going to both get their limit breaks right here. And then we are going to be good to go. All right. And there you guys have it. So if they choose, if that boss right there chooses your healer going into that, it's going to be a lot easier. If he did not choose your healer, it's still definitely beatable. So, like I said, if he had killed Zack, I would have gone. I would have used the Bramble Spine on Matt to boost Tifa's physical attack to save her one turn of using Amaranth's claws, um, and then I would have just done as much damage as possible to try and get the kill along the way. But other than that, the fight is not too hard. I don't really think it's a very fun fight, uh, to be honest. But, and I think that unless you have, you know, some pretty powerful physical attack weapons, not every player is going to be able to get that stage level 130 clear. But that being said, I hope this guide does get you guys that clear and you can get those last 100 crystals, which I think is what the, <laughs> the reward is for getting the stage level 130. That being said, if you guys enjoyed this video today, don't forget to drop a like, sub to the channel for future Final Fantasy VII Ever Crisis content. Hope you all have a wonderful night. Take care and peace.